Oh, there it is. Sweet Audie, welcome, welcome. It's the Thursday weekly webinar series. Uh, happy, Merry Chris Mahana Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating. But uh, uh, it should be, we should be a little festive tonight. We're going to have some fun. We're also going to keep it a little bit loose. I got my man Nick Anderson hanging out. Um, and his microphone works this week. What's up? Are we good? It's all you about technology, me, right? man. You love, you love. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You love to hate it. Yeah. Uh, very special guest. Every going to be rocking a special guest. Um, my boy on the uh, West Coast, Matt Veredas. Hopefully, I said that name right. But uh, before we get into um, what we're going to talk about tonight, real quick, uh, guys, I'm your co-host Daniel Kump, and just uh, real quick, I've been in space for the last 15 years, on and off, and I didn't really find online marketing until this past spring when I started following a young chap by the name of Nick Anderson. You guys might know him, hopefully. And uh, after my network marketing biz wasn't really doing what I wanted it to do, I was literally in the New Hampshire Mall, uh, Mall of New Hampshire, right up the street there, walking past and out business cars trying to drive up drive business and do what I can to my family. I just wasn't having the results that I wanted. So I turned to YouTube, started doing some research and found Nick and uh, literally a couple months later, he uh, made an offer to me and said, hey, I just started this new thing. It's called Digital Altitude. And I said, yeah, you know, what the hell, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And I, I took a look at it. I fell in love. And, you know, uh, DA is not why we're here tonight, but just kind of share my story. And once I found the coaches and I really started, uh, I was able to realize that, you know, there was someone that could literally hold my hand throughout the entire process uh, so much better than the standard MLM network marketing. And I actually started to see results. And five months, I've made more money than I made in the last 15 years in network marketing. I've had days of over $4,000. And guys, when you, when you go through the steps, the steps, and most importantly, you never quit and you have the right mindset, and we're going to talk a lot about that tonight, then you guys can find success too. So glad you're here. Uh, Nick, over to you if you want to just... Um, kick awesome. it off and uh before we do that i just want to say uh everybody in the chat room i see you guys joining on love love that you guys are here rock on uh just let us know where you guys are from it's great to see you guys from all around the world so own up take it away sweet sweet well i'm excited to be here with you guys glad to finally have the technology figured out where my mic's working you know i'm not a very tech savvy guy uh but i love coming on these sharing you know value with you guys and helping you overcome obstacles that you're facing either in you know your life or your business and helping you get to the next level. And I just kind of want to bring it back and kind of wind the clock back a little bit and tell you guys my story for those of you that you know haven't heard it before and you know maybe this will help inspire you. It'll empower you to really keep going after your dreams, your goals and what you originally set after when you got started with your business. So back when I was about, you know, 18, 19 years old, you know, I just gotten out of high school. You know, we all, when we graduate, you don't really know what you want to do, right? Uh, you're ready to conquer the world, though, and most people will tell you that you either either need to go to college, right, get a degree, join the military, or get a job, right? Those are, like, the three main things. So for me, I was like, well, you know, the military is an option. I don't really want to get a job right now, so, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go to school. I'm going to try and figure it out, right? You know, try and figure out why I'm here, what I want to do, and what I want to pursue as my pur purpose in my career. So I went to college, and uh, I wasted you know, felt like I was wasting my parents money there because I didn't know why I was there. And I believe that college is a great thing for the people who know exactly what they want out of it. But for me, I didn't know what I want out of it. So I just kept going, you know, two years of schooling and I uh, just took a bunch of random ass classes like, you know, uh, you know, like canoeing, snowshoeing, like just <laughs> archery, like a bunch of different things that they were fun. Don't get me wrong, but like, they didn't really teach me anything. I could have done those on my own time and I was just spending money to be there. And I felt like, you know, I was destined for more. I was destined for greatness. You know, for those of you out there, you probably feel like you're put on this earth to do something special. Maybe you don't know what that is yet, but you know that there's more out of life than what you're living right now. And when I got back home from school, you know, I was in a fraternity up at the University of Idaho and, uh, you know, I partied a lot that year and it was a good experience, but not something I'd want to do my whole life. You know, they say there's two types of people that come out of frats, people that are successful or alcoholics, 
right? <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I want to be the first of the foremost, and uh, you know, I want to do something, uh, but I didn't know what. And at the time, you know, I'd worked uh, summer jobs, you know, like mowing lawns here and there. Worked at a hospital where I was scrubbing dishes full time for minimum wage, like seven dollars and fifty cents an hour. And it was very humbling because it taught me what it means to work hard, right? You know, I was one of the hardest workers at that job, and uh, you know, but the problem that I had with it was was no matter how hard I worked the people that worked with me, they still got paid the same amount as me. And I realized that when I was going to work and I was hustling, I was grinding, I was putting the effort, you know, I was scrubbing dishes for like 60 patients every single night. And my coworkers, one of them would just be sitting there just slacking off, just kind of sitting there and we'd get, get paid the exact same. So I didn't really like that. It didn't make me happy because I believe that, you know, if I'm going to work harder, I deserve to get be getting paid more. Now I could have stuck with that job and climb my way up the corporate ladder to eventually become a manager of the kitchen or a cook or something like that. But I knew there was more, right? I wanted to determine my own worth. I didn't want someone else tell me how much I was worth per hour, right? And if you feel the same way, then that's what drew you into get started with like network marketing or online marketing. So when I was uh, searching for something, I remember selling stuff on Amazon. You know, I was doing drop shipping for a little bit, like selling snapback hats, buying them wholesale off like Chinese websites and then reselling them on eBay or Craigslist, my hometown. And I was making decent money doing that. But at the same time, you know, it was, uh, it was illegal to do it when I was like 17, 18 years old. And uh, I realized that I need something that's going to be long-term sustainable, that's legal, that's legit, that I'm going to be able to do for the rest of my life and leave an impact and a legacy down the road. So long story short, one of my buddies in the fraternity, he introduced me to a company called Vima, right? And Vima kind of went through this whole ordeal where they were getting attacked by the FTC a while ago. They actually got through it, but that was my first company I ever joined and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, I got started with it immediately after, like within the first month, I dropped out of school. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I moved to Seattle and I started traveling the Northwest and doing the stuff that I was taught to do in order to build that business. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm gonna be transparent here. Everything that I was taught to do, it worked, right? You know, prospect people, do the home events, do the meetings, do the Skype calls, the three-way calls, it all worked, right? You know, I was able to build a fairly sizable team, like 800, 900 people, nothing too crazy, but you know, it was working. If I would have continued to doing that, I would have kept growing and growing and growing. But at the same time, I kind of felt like I was a hamster spinning on another wheel, right? In corporate America, you kind of feel like you're a hamster spinning on a wheel, right? And you have to climb the corporate ladder and network marketing. A lot of people join a business and they feel like they jump on another wheel that never ends, right? They keep having to maintain that level of effort where they're putting in that work to the events and stuff. And it, and it, and it worked, but at the same time, it's like, I wanted something that was a little bit more automated. I wanted something that had a little bit more leverage. And after a couple years of just chasing people, you know, hunting them down, online and offline, spamming my links all over social media, I realized that what I personally was doing wasn't working. I was good at building a team and an organization, but the thing that I struggled with was recruiting. I sponsored about 12 people in 14 months, 12 of them I personally knew, right? They weren't people that joined me through YouTube videos or anything like that. They were friends from like my fraternity, you know, friends through friends and all this stuff. All 12 of them quit within the first six months. So, you know, the saying, the bunnies lead to the bears, right? So I just leveraged their networks and we started growing through that. But I wanted to be able to sponsor more people, right? I saw these gurus online that were crushing it in their business. They were sponsoring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And I was like, how is this even possible? And they were sponsoring people that didn't even know them, that they didn't even have to prospect that they didn't even have to talk to, these people would just join through their links and then they would reach out to them after they got started. So I was like, that's what I want in my business. So I remember stumbling across this one guy, his name was Dave Wood. And uh, he really became my mentor in the online marketing space when I was first getting started. And uh, you know, I joined him in a few different things and really just started modeling myself after him and what he was doing because he literally was crushing top of the leaderboards in every single company that he joined. And I just started modeling after him. Some things that he taught were really revolutionary and transforming for me. You know, the number one thing that he taught was the power of my own story the power of storytelling and being able to help transform people's lives through the power of like having an impactful story, right? So instead of focusing on how could I explain the product, the service, the comp plan better, I shifted that and I started focusing on how I could 
help impact people and inspire them through my own story. And when I started to do that, it was unbelievable the results I started to get. I started making YouTube videos where I was just throwing my story out there. I was being transparent with people, you know, but I was just speaking a vision into them. I didn't have any big results in the start, but I was just telling them where I was going, right? You know, in the Bible, it says where there is no vision, the people will perish. So I just started speaking my vision into other people through the power of my own story. And this started to grow rapidly, man. You know, within the 12 month time frame of, of applying what he was teaching me, you know, I was able to sponsor 324 people into my business. And the craziest part about that was I did it without any prospecting. You know, I didn't chase family and friends. I didn't go out and cold prospect people. I didn't hand out a single business card. In fact, I didn't even do a single home event. I did this all online through YouTube, through Facebook, and through Instagram. Okay, and the things we're gonna be sharing with you guys tonight over the next, you know, 40, 50, 60 minutes, we might try and keep this like right around an hour. Sometimes we go over because, you know, we like to ramble, mostly me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're excited to have you guys on tonight and, uh, you know, just excited to be sharing a lot of value with you. So with that being said, um, I think I'm gonna pass it over to you, Matt. Uh, if you wanna share your story with everyone, you know, uh, where you're from and uh, why you're doing this more importantly than anything else. And, uh, you know, with that being said, brother, yeah, just go ahead and throw it down for him. Yeah, thanks, uh, Nick. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks, Dan. I appreciate you guys having me. And, you know, Nick touched on something. He said he did one of three things. Uh, he, well, he knew he was going to have to do one of three things. He was going to either have to get a job, join the military, or go to college. Uh, you know, and I did number two. I, I joined the military at 19 from Tom's River, New Jersey. Um, actually, let me back up. Before that, I tried to go to college. And uh, I failed my public speaking class. Okay, I was the most outgoing person in my senior year of high school, and I got a W in public speaking. That's worse than an F. So uh, I joined the Coast Guard. Uh, my goal was to move to Hawaii. I'm an avid surfer. I've been surfing since I can remember. So I moved to Hawaii. I lived on Oahu for three years, Maui for three years, and I just traveled the world basically for about eight years. I've been in for 13, and three years ago I settled down with my wife, and you know, I don't know if you know anything about the military, but on one income with a family and a, and a, a little boy, it, it's really tough. And, you know, we struggled on one income. So a, a buddy of mine called and I got started in network marketing, but uh, I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I just kind of floated around and I tried to call as many people on my list as I could. But to be honest, just with the training and the amount of deployments I had, it was just really hard to get a solid structure and momentum built. And I wound up enrolling like four people, had customers, but never really was able to create my, my dream and goal of, you know, time and financial freedom, which is really the why that I'm in digital altitude. And um, my most recent network marketing company I was in, um, I, I failed completely. And um, it was about three weeks of just being idle. And my wife and I were driving to the grocery store to uh, go grocery shopping every week like we do with our son. And it was like kind of a fun time. Like I just push my little Grom around the store and you know, he waves at people and it's, you know, it's just like a good family experience. And you know, as we got to the counter to pay, my wife is the one that kind of handles all the finances. So she went to swipe her card and it was declined. And like, I can't even describe how that, that feeling was like, saw the people in line that <clears throat> saw us and were playing with, with our son. And it was like right then that I knew like I had to make a change. Like network marketing wasn't the answer for me. I know it is for a lot of people. Some people crush it. But like for me, it just, it just wasn't, you know, where I wanted to go with my vision. And I wound up seeing one of Dan's videos on YouTube. And like it, it just really resonated deeply with me. And I think I did some research. Uh, it was October that I got started. And I wound up just like kind of going all in, reaching out to Dan. He's like literally the best sponsor. He just provides you with all the training, all the knowledge. And, uh, you know, from there, like that's just where I got my momentum going. And, uh, you know, I real like the number one marketing method that I wanted to apply with was Facebook just because I just think it's such a solid social media platform. Everyone's on it. And you can kind of just be yourself, right, and tell your story. But what I found was I had such a hard time, you know, getting my story out and kind of finding my own voice. What I did was I kind of just mimicked people, you know, like, like Nick, I, I took stuff from you, Dan, I, I definitely took stuff from you, but it just never felt like it was coming from me, you know? So what I did is I kind of just shut everything down 
and I just took a break and I walked away and I just really had to find out like where was my why really coming from and it was that you know that experience that I had in the grocery store and I just wrote it all out based off of a structure that Dan gave me you know and I kind of dabbled around Facebook ads and I was really lost in the sauce I was seeing results in some leads but I really wasn't going the path that I wanted to go and, and build the momentum that I knew I could get so I reached out to Dan and he's like, man, like you should professionalize and reach out to a team that could build this for you. And you know, and that's exactly what I did. And, and let me just tell you with that, when you have a team that like fully has your back and just knows the exact steps and structure to put in place for you, it's such a comforting feeling. And you know, just recently I, I got my story back and you know, there's a saying, if, if your why doesn't make you cry, then like, what are you doing? You know, and I got that my story back and like it just hit home so hard and like I could say now like I'm in such a good spot with where I'm at professionally and I just know where I want to go and like I'm starting to build momentum and I just I really couldn't be happier with you know the training and support that I have like from this webinar like the team that I have within Digital Altitude and you know if you're having any questions about getting started like just go in and like go all for this man you're you're in the right spot with the right people and and the knowledge and you know if that's just all I could leave you with is you know that's it be unique be yourself and like build a story that's unique and true to yourself awesome hey Matt, Matt thank you uh, thank you, uh so, much so much for sharing, sharing your story. story no worries uh, thanks for having me the kind words <laughs> of course man um but yeah I mean I think your story really um it resonated with me you know, for a lot of people, uh, that's real life, you know, um, having your credit card declined or just struggling with bills. And um, I'm glad that you were able to, um, you know, partner with a team and, and be able to tell your story because you really have an awesome story to tell. And, you know, it's real life and it hits home. And that's that we're going to dive deep into tonight, guys. So, um, you know, just from what myself and Nick and, and Matt shared, that's what tonight's all about is, is telling the story and really the story behind the story, the real why and what is going to make people want to relate to you and really either want to buy from you or want to join your opportunity based off of what you have to say and how you're going to say it. And we're going to kind of get into all that tonight. Um, you know, we don't really have too much of a structure. We're going to keep it a little free flowing. We're definitely going to go through the Q and a like we always do at the end to make sure that you guys have all the information you need. I'm going to share with you tonight is what's called the hypnotic story structure. Okay. And that's exactly what Matt and I have used, um, to craft our Facebook ads. And you know, it's, it's a, it's a way that you can really tell your story, but also make really enticing for your target audience and obviously we were with us last week when Brian Dixon was on and we went through Facebook advertising we really talked about zeroing in on your target audience and being able to tell your story so we're just going to take that one step further now this week and dive a little bit deeper so uh, again Matt thank you appreciate that we'll probably kick it back um, but at this point uh, before I get into the hypnotic story structure Nick, I know obviously you got some things to share and you want to take people through PASS, uh, the acronym there. So before uh, I kick it over to you, I just want to um, remind you guys that obviously we're as that we possibly can. So hopefully you guys have you guys have some paper and a pen and you guys are ready to take some notes because there's going to be a lot of uh, great knowledge that we're going to share with you tonight. So if you have a phone kicking around, shut it off. If you have other tabs open on, uh, you know, your laptop, MacBook, whatever you're on, tablet, shut those out and just focus on what we're going to go through because this is definitely going to help your business and it's going to help you drive more leads, more sales and really kick some fucking ass in 2017. And that's why we're here for you doing this every single week. So that being said, Nick, take it away, dude. Sweet, sweet. Well, I'll just cover a couple things for you guys um, because Dan, you know, has a good structure for this storytelling formula. So make sure you guys have a notes pen that you can write this down. I just want to talk more on principles because a lot of people wonder, you know, what is the 
number one skill, what's the number one thing that they need to be doing to be getting results in their business, right? And as you start to learn more, you realize there really isn't one skill. It's a conglomeration of a variety of different skills all compacted together and just flows out through your marketing, right? It's not like, you know, one specific thing is going to get you results. If you learn like little things here and there and you combine them all together, you know, you will be able to get results. But there's two things. If you guys focus on these two things, like it will transition into every other aspect of your marketing in your life, okay? Number one is obviously storytelling. Number two is copywriting. Okay, those two things, being able to tell and speak your story. Number two is being able to write and transition that speaking into your writing. Okay, those two things right there will make you millions of dollars online, right? And, uh, you know, I've been studying, you know, Jay Abraham, Frank Kern, all these top marketers for the past couple years now, and I'm still learning every single day. But one of the easiest ways to engage, you know, to influence, to persuade, and ethically hypnotize, like we say, you know, and communicate a message to people and influence them to buy through you is by becoming a better storyteller, right? You know, the, the mind, if you guys think about it, it's hardwired to remember stories, not facts. And you guys have probably heard this before, you know, facts tell, but stories sell. So don't worry about memorizing all these crazy facts about the ingredients within your products and, you know, how many different vitamins, essential minerals, mangosteen, aloe vera, like all this stuff that it has, because the reality is like that stuff is cool. It makes your product healthy if you're in a health and nutrition company, but people don't necessarily care that much about it, right? They don't care that much about it. What they care about is how your product or service is going to help them achieve a better lifestyle, right? So uh, Mark Hoverson, he basically put it this way to me. He said, look, you know, your perfect customer, your perfect prospect is on this end right here, okay? You know, the lifestyle that they want is over here, right? Being able to, what is it? Their why? Retire their family, right? Travel the world, you know, give back to those that are less fortunate, just achieve ultimate time and financial freedom, right? So your product is right here, but here's the thing. Your product is the portal. So instead of talking, it's the portal to get them to transition to that better life. So instead of talking so much about your product, your service, the comp plan, all this stuff, you want to mold a story that is going to inspire them to take that journey, you know, through the portal, across the bridge, whatever you want to call it. I mean, if you look at who are the best storytellers Hollywood right through movies I mean if you look at you know big movies like for example like Lord of the Rings right you know Lord of the Rings is like one of the biggest movies Harry Potter too you know if you guys look within those stories they have certain things right so the main thing that they have is they have a journey right so the journey of the main character so Joe Rogan always says he says look if your life was a movie and you were the main character what would you do from the point you wake up to when you go to sleep right your life is a movie and you're the main character, okay? So you need to be crafting your story as if you're the main character, right? And as you start going along, there's other archetypes, you know, within the story that will help you transition to get you to where you want to be. So to give you an example, okay, so every single story has a plot. So what I would recommend doing, and this is what Matt said he did, and this is what I did too, is writing down like kind of a brief outline of how you would structure your story. And the best way to do it is like this, keeping it super, super simple, okay? It's just P A. S. It's a little acronym that I like to use if we're simplifying it down. Then as we go through this webinar, I'll kind of expand on some nuances on the reason why this works so well and how you can kind of like grow your story to be even better. Okay. But P, the P is your past, right? So when you talk about your past, what happens is, is it relates with your audience, right? It shows them that you come from humble beginnings. If you look at, you know, the Hobbit, for example, what is it, Bilbo Baggins, Frodo Baggins, whatever his name is, right? He has a past, you know, it shows his past of how he's grown up, right? In the Shire, right? In his house. So you have a past that you share with people. And also you want to go with pain and problem, okay? So you have a pain from your past that has caused a problem in your life. And what this does is it shows empathy for your audience, right? And it gets them to connect with you, builds that emotional connection. Because if all you talk about is the result, the lifestyle, being able to live the dream, people are like, yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't build depth, right? It doesn't, it's like a tree, right? You know, if all you talk about is the fruits, the growth of the tree, but, but you don't spend time on the roots, then it's not going to withstand the test of time, okay? So what I like to do when I go into my story is I always start out, you know, with, with my past, my pain, my problem, but I don't dwell on it, okay? Because then it turns into like an AA meeting, right? Now, Alcoholics Anonymous, where people are just like, yeah, man, my life is rough. You know, it sucks. Uh, working this job, I hate it. Uh, you know, so join the business.
And then that's where their story ends most of the time. Like in our business, we used to do why circles and a why circle basically is where you go around the circle and everyone shares their why and why they're doing the business. And uh, a lot of the times it came out with like a depressing vibe at the end of it, right? So here's how you kind of transition it so it empowers people, okay? So you go to the A, the agitation, right? So you want to amplify your agitation. And what this will do is it will amplify the pain within them because here's the reality, you guys. People are motivated by two things. They want to move away from pain and towards pleasure. But pain is a bigger motivator than pleasure. It's massive. If, if all you're talking about is what's great, what's possible, you know, that's motivational. But if you talk about like their pain, that will motivate them even more. Because think about it like this, you know, if you saw a video, um, if you've seen this video before online, there's this guy riding his bike in the woods. And uh, I don't know if it's fake or if it's real, but still it's pretty insane. He's just casually riding along, you know, probably going to like a pond or something to go fishing or whatever it may be. And uh, he's just casually riding. And then all of a sudden he looks back and there's a bear chasing him, right? And if you guys are familiar with bears, they can run pretty fast, like over 20 miles per hour, right? You know, they're quick for such massive beasts, right? So he looks back and this bear chases him. Immediately, he kicks it into high gear, right? He starts pedaling his ass off and starts going down the trail. Now the bear is the pain. The bear is the fear. The bear is what he's moving away from. The bear is the problem. If there wasn't a bear, he wouldn't pedal quicker, okay? So if you don't talk about your problem, it's not gonna motivate people to move quicker to get started with your business, okay? So when you talk about the agitation, it's the tipping point that caused you to move quicker from away from the bear. Okay. So it's what you struggle with, right? So it's like, I always say I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, I was tired of doing the same old thing, repeating, you know, the insanity, right? Is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result. So in order to get something different, you have to do something different. So like little transition words like that, you guys, super simple, but you talk about how, you know, you, you just wanted a better life in order to do it. You just couldn't stand going to work every day, scrubbing the dishes, you know, looking at your credit card balance and seeing it in the negative, right? Not being able to afford to put food on the table and you're ready to make a change. Now the S is the solution, okay? So instead of dwelling on the problem, right, it shows the solution. And the solution is just simply what you found, your business, right? It's the end result. It's the freedom, right? It's the lifestyle. And uh, you don't have to have a result to get people to listen to you at this point. You don't. You just need to have excitement and confidence. Those two things right there will sell anyone. Like I always say, you know, if you were excited enough, you could sell ice to an Eskimo. Okay. So as you start to go into the solution, if you don't have a result, simply talk about somebody else's result in your company, preferably your upline, your sponsor, your mentor, right? So this is where the archetypes play a role into this. And I'll just touch on this really quick and then I'll pass it over to you, Dan. But, you know, throughout stories, pretty much there's a bunch of different archetypes, right? So like I said, you're the hero in your own movie, you know, but if you don't have a result, you're more like the reluctant hero, okay? So the reluctant hero is pretty much like, you know, Bilbo Baggins, right? So Bilbo Baggins isn't a hero by any means. If, if you think of a hero, what do you think of? Like in some a movie like that, you think of some big, strong, like, you know, guy or girl that Abel can like conquer, you know, civilizations or whatever it may be. Bilbo Baggins, right? He's the, he's the burglar, right? So he's the reluctant hero where his mentor, Gandalf, comes, knocks on his door and says, we have a quest that we need to, you know, go to reclaim the lonely mountain and defeat the dragon, right? The dragon is the enemy. Okay, so there's different archetypes, right? The hero is Bilbo Baggins. The hero is you, okay? The mentor your mentor would be like Gandalf in this case, right? Your upline that you're talking about. The enemy would either be like the dragon or like your boss, your nine to five job, that lifestyle that you didn't like. And as you start to tell this story, it's captivating people and it's drawing them into it, okay? Because if you're seeing on social media, people posting all these stuff about their products, like five new spots, you know, this week, ask me how, or have you heard about this crazy rap thing? Ask me how and all this stuff. And people are like, I don't really care about that, right? You know, if you guys uh, go on my Facebook and you see the last post that I made, I actually applied this into this post and it increased the engagement, just blew it through the roof, right? So whenever I need to like 
you know, really get a message across, I'll follow this exact structure right there and I'll incorporate some archetypes into it, right? You know, me being the hero, the reluctant hero, just the average guy that's like, you know, was just sick and tired of doing the same old thing and then had a mentor come into his life and teach him, you know, how to get a specific result, whether that be like 10,000 per month, whether that be able to travel the world, you know, whether that be, you know, just like sit, sitting on a beach somewhere and everything. And then as you start to expand and as you start to grow, you know, your you will become from the reluctant hero to the hero, and other people will start using your story as leverage through their story, and that's how you start spreading your brand online through word of mouth advertising. So I'll dive into it a little bit deeper, you guys. Um, you know, I don't want to ramble too much here, but Dan, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to you, and you can break down this whole structure for them that they can start to to use instead of uh, all their stories. Rock on, dude. Um, I think I, I just want to hammer on. Um, specifically in the past acronym, because obviously when I get into the, the hypnotic story structure, that's going to break it, um, break it all down a little bit further and obviously expand, um, you know, kind of go down and out and expand a lot wider. But um, one of the things that when you, uh, the A in past, like when your situation, um, depending on how you're telling your story, and this is, that really I talked a little bit earlier about being able to hone in on your target audience and your, whatever your niche is, whatever, you know, network marketing, genre, affiliate marketing, whatever you're in. When you are um, zoning in, you know, and, and, you, and you put that agitation in there, that is your specific point to relate to your audience. So for me, and I know, you know, uh, Matt has kind of a similar story where, um, you know, I'm, I'm 39 if, and I have a child, uh, you know, we specifically have a child that has you know, some special opportunities and not that my target audience would be, you know, parents of kids with special needs, but typically I'm going to go after an audience that's between, you know, 35 and 45 on average, or even, you know, 30 and 30 and 50 to go a little wider. But when I'm talking to those people and chances are if they do have children and I, and I agitate the situation a little bit, I'm going to talk about time. I'm going to talk about finances. I'm going to talk about, you know, not being able to see your kids and, and be with them as much as you want. And that that was a struggle for me as well. And you use that agitation to relate to who you're speaking to. And you almost want to, able to craft your story in a way where you're speaking to a specific person like I'm talking to you you know I'm not talking to a large room of people um, but I'm talking to a specific person so just you know think about that when you're crafting your story think about that when you know even if you're just post on Facebook you know post it uh, even or a post on Instagram whatever it is whatever you're doing if it is a activity and we're putting a post out wherever it is YouTube Instagram Facebook whatever it is if you're posting that in order to drive engagement in order to drive people to notice you hi you know um, check out what I'm doing pretend like you're speaking to one specific person and go after that, that audience to do and what you're trying to say so I hope that makes sense Definitely, um, definitely rock on all right so I'm going to get into the hypnotic story structure I know we talked about this uh, last week but I'm actually going to I know Brian uh, dabbled in it a little bit um, and I'm actually gonna I'm a screen share I'm gonna pull it up on the screen and this is your opportunity to take some notes hopefully and again I, I mentioned earlier in the chat box but for those of you that are watching this afterwards that um, or obviously if you're watching it on my YouTube channel, you get that, but this is going to be, um, available on my YouTube channel for tonight, but most likely by tomorrow. So if you don't have a chance to take all the notes and see everything in the hypnotic story structure, uh, you'll be able to see the replay and obviously down then. All right. So let's get the screen share again. Boom. All right, Nick, Matt, you guys see my screen? 
I see the vortex leading into oh, the yeah. matrix right Love now. the vortex, dude. Love the vortex. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I started crafting an email earlier. Uh, let's see, where are we? All right, so hypnotic story structure. So this is where I hope you guys are writing this stuff down. And I'm probably not going to go deep into everything that's here, but kind of want to graze across this. Now, you can use this Say you're going to use Facebook advertising and you're going to use that to tell your story and obviously get people either to buy a product from you or get them into your specific opportunity. Um, you know, you can make this longer or shorter and you don't necessarily have to hit every single step in here. I think there's 13 total steps. Able to cover most of this. So right off the bat your very first intro which is the you know the first step here is probably your most important part of almost this entire thing you really want that that hook hook line and sinker as they say um you know to really engage and, and captivate your audience so uh, as an example like the intro your first sentence should have a keyword that relates to the audience that you're targeting so think about what niche or what industry or genre or whatever that you're in and you know focus on that so if you're into network marketing then have a keyword that is going to relate to uh, you know something that your average network marketer would know and understand and I want to say something along the lines of like you know hey if you told me six months ago that I'd be able to quit my nine to five job and stop slaving and passing out business cards at a local mall, I would have told you you were crazy. If you're in network marketing and you're struggling and you read that storyline, you're going to be, wait, whoa, what's this guy doing? Um, so that first sentence has to be very, very, you really want to take some time. And if you guys are going through the hypnotic story structure and you're creating an ad or you're just creating a post, you really want to put some time behind this. And if you crank this out in five minutes, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be that good. Writer. And if that's the case, you should probably should be writing books, not an affiliate or network marketer. But um, take some time behind this. I know, you know Matt just created his story. And you know, when I created my story, it took me, it took me a couple of days really to think of everything that I needed to. All right, so again, first thing is, you know, your, your intro sentence, really, really important. Have a keyword that relates to your audience that, that, that you're targeting. Number two, empathy that specifically, you know, it talks specifically to your audience, okay? Uh, number three, you want to tell them why they should listen to you. You know, so even though, and, and this is where people get hung up a lot. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, well, you know, I'm not making $10,000 a month or I don't have a lot of credibility. And a lot of the times in the leverage of other people, you can always leverage other people's results, but you can also share a personal experience. Um, you know, like the one that Matt shared earlier about being in the grocery store line and it's like you and your and your significant other and if you have a child and you're there and your and your credit card gets declined I mean that's that's real life and that might might be a reason why someone would want to listen to you not necessarily the monetary reason but listen to you because you're speaking from the heart speaking truth and you're speaking real life experiences so that might be a reason that someone might say Oh shit, man! I was in that same situation, and you know, let me hear what this guy or gal has to say. All right. So the fourth thing uh, in the paragraph, they talk about their problems and how you can solve them in short. But uh, in your own experience, and again, creating empathy, talking about your struggles. So expand whatever that reason is why they should listen to you. Now you're going to expand upon that a little bit. Okay. Uh, fifth, you want to share how you got to where you are today. So this is the transition from when you were struggling into you, know, you being in a better position now. And again, you don't necessarily have to have these big, huge, crazy results where you're making six figures a month or six figures a year, but maybe even just how you're in a better position today, right now, than you were a month ago or six months ago or 12 months ago. Just keep it real, okay? A lot of people get too caught up on, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not making enough money. All right, so, 
um, then you transition into your story on the sixth thing, seventh, um, relates to the niche or audience and not random chit chat. Like, uh, you know, nobody cares about your dog names. So again, it's all relating to your audience and your niche audience. And I was, that's what I was initially talking about in the beginning is that you want to be almost speaking to another person. And I know somebody dropped that in the chat box that, you know, you just talk like you're talking to me. Okay. Um, eighth thing is talk about your failed attempts in life. Uh, if you know, because you know, nobody's perfect. And again, it's all about keeping this real. So if you did try a network marketing book company before, if you did fall flat on your ass or fall on your face, or it just didn't work for you, talk about that struggle. Talk about, um, went through and how, how it got you to where you are today. And then when you transition out of that, you're going to start pre-framing in the ninth thing. You're going to pre-frame, um, Pre, sorry, pre-frame, <laughs> need, uh, need some more tea here. Um, to what you want to offer to them as a solution. And again, part of that pass, which Nick covered earlier, now we're getting into the, the actual solution part, okay? So 10th thing, when you started, you had no experience or limited experience, if that's true. And again, with most of us, because everybody starts somewhere, right? No one just jumps in and is an expert, right, from Jump Street. And then uh, once you started, into the 11th thing uh, when you change your life you know you give somebody advice with their life but also pre-frame um, what it is you're offering and again part of that past that s that solution how this is going to help them further expand on that after all the tips then explain how you're different and why you care so much about helping them a little example about that too is like this 12th thing here as People are interested, you know, in, in my primary business, the digital altitude. If somebody reaches out to me, I have a pre-scripted, um, if someone just sends me a message saying, hey, can I have more info? Or if they comment on my post on Facebook and say, can I have more info? At the end of that paragraph, I invite them in our private group um, where there's lots of training and support and um, you know, there's a group, there's lots of people that are just like you that are, you know, trying this business and we're reaching out and supporting each other and we're helping each other. We're giving people advice, sharing what works, what doesn't work. We're there to lift each other up and help each other out. And that's something that makes, you know, our team a little bit different than the average online marketer we offer that support we offer that training and that's a big thing for people because when you can show them why you're different when you can show them that you care people are going to be more you know they're going to be more up to to join you uh, versus just you being like you know some geek behind a computer and then lastly um, you kind of want to just end with you know for more information about XYZ whatever your your business is um, you know you're gonna oh, there's Brian <laughs> um, you know, you're going to want to lead them into your capture page. Once you've we, you've gone through those, the last thing is share them. You know where they want to go next, and also, like I was just saying, share your personal Facebook page. That's one thing that I do, and I think what I'm actually going to try to do while we're here, I'm going to try to let me get rid of the vortex there. I'm going to see if I can actually pull up. people just to kind of give you guys uh, just to kind of give you guys an example so this guy right here he just um, someone had reached out to me and says hey can I have more info so one of the things that I do is just at the very tail end of it and I know this is a little bit off from the uh, hypnotic story structure itself just one of the things I add to kind of keep it real is I mentioned to people reach out to me on Facebook. I offer my personal connection. So not just my ad page, but I also offer my personal connection and then say, if you get started with me today, I'll get you added into our private mastermind group. There you'll be surrounded by an amazing team that will not only help support you, but be there to answer any questions you have along the way. We have a ton of training and resources to help the newbie to the pro. You know, hey, Dan, you, Dan, I'm going to cut you, you off. Have to, 
is it possible? Is it possible for you to provide a copy of uh, that hip, that story structure at the end of this, like in the description below on YouTube when we post up the recording? Uh, yeah, you know what I can actually do is I can put it in um, I can put it in a Google Drive, and I'll make the link available either on my YouTube channel or what I'll do is I'll also put my email address in the chat box, and then if people want that, they can just email me, and I'll just send them a copy too. Okay, I think it'd be best if you just had a clickable link because you get you you'll be getting a lot of emails over the course of a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know there's well people on this webinar that could be that could be responding a lot. Definitely, definitely. But yeah, um, that'll be good. Matt, I, just saw a couple of cool comments I like your I like your comment, Matt. One ring to rule them all. <laughs> That's pretty good. Lord of the Rings there. <laughs> One ring to find them all. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Um, let me see if I can get that into my uh, Google Drive, and I'll make that available. Awesome. Um, either on the U on uh, the YouTube channel or um, here in the chat. I'll get I'll I'll get it to you somehow. I don't know how, but I'll get it to you somehow. So just uh, just hang tight. But it's the your... overall hypnotic story structure. And so I know for me, and and use that with Facebook advertising. So we tell. Um, our entire story and um, you know I don't know if you guys want to actually read my story or, or actually see the ad um, I can I can show you guys that what it looks like but you can also take that and you can kind of condense it down and you can use that you could use that with a regular Facebook post and maybe just condense it up a little bit you can use that in an email if you're crafting an email to send to your list you can use it many different ways it doesn't Necessarily have to be for Facebook ad when you can be real and you follow that structure it's literally just like one of the movies you know you're going to see a, a drama with Julia Roberts and whoever it is and they follow a storied structure line and the whole movie follows you know a series of events just like that hypnotic story structure it follows you know you're basically taking people right through the path of your life and you're going through that pass acronym at the beginning and you know the the P the A the S and you're following right through that so at the end of it compelled to either join you or buy from you mm -hmm. makes sense definitely no Nick or yeah Matt, I want to touch on you guys want to chime in there yeah I want to touch on a couple things that you said because that's really key like obviously you guys aren't just going to come out of the woodworks and memorize everything that he just gave you like if I were to structure a Facebook ad or a post I have to refer back to the story structure because I don't do it perfect every time like if I were to just do it based on my memory like I say you can't trust your brain as a filing cabinet right you know a short pencil is better than a long memory so the best thing you could do is have this you know uh, document we'll provide it to you guys there'll probably be a link below for like Dropbox or Google Drive or everything that you can go through and every time you make a post every time you create an ad every time you make a video you can just refer back to that little structure right there and you can start to do it but a couple things that he talked about on that is you know one one thing people want is they want to be a part of something that is larger than themselves Okay, that's why the people join sports teams. That's why they join churches. That's why they join large organizations and all this stuff because they want to be a part of that where they have people helping them out. So if you incorporate that aspect into your story and you focus more time on the development of the main character, and I'll explain what I mean by that by both those. Okay, so obviously you have the journey, right? And in the journey, you have the goal. So within Lord of the Rings, okay, you know, or the Hobbit, I'll just use the Hobbit here. Okay, so Bilbo Baggins, his, his goal in the journey is to go and reclaim, you know, the mountain that the dragon has taken over where the gold is there, right? So that's the main goal, okay? So, you know, he has to overcome a lot in order to get there. He has to overcome his fear to leave the Shire, right, which Gandalf helps him with. You know, he has to overcome, you know, working with other people, dealing with, like, his, you know, d disgust of, like, using the rags to blow his nose of the people that he's around and all these little tiny things right here so they're getting you to relate more to the main character right so you get to see his growth throughout the whole movie now he doesn't just go from you know past pain problem to solution immediately they created three movies based on this based on the growth in the main character three movies along the agitation right so the agitation is actually the main point the agitation and like that middle section is where you want to delve deep into this into your story and this is what gets people to relate to you right so you have obstacles along the way that you have to overcome and as you start to explain these obstacles whether they be negative family members negative relatives 
negative friends that are shutting you down, you know, dealing with issues of, you know, ha- lacking money, lacking motivation, you know, just getting a lot of negative feedback from other people, mostly like dealing with social approval is like one of the number one things and how you overcame that, that will inspire people to get past theirs, right? And uh, how, and the other thing is when people want to be a part of something much larger than themselves within the story of the Hobbit, he has people that helps him along the way, right? He joins a group that crusade to the mountain. So like another movie, think of Harry Potter, right? Who does Harry Potter have that helps him along the way? Well, he has Ron, he has Hermione, he has Hagrid, and, uh, you know, all these other people, right? You know, obviously he has some people that are the antagonists that try and stop him, right? You know, so those are like the, you know, media, the social approval from others, right? But eventually it gets to the point where he has that breakthrough, right? That aha moment, you know, the realization. And the realization doesn't have to be a financial breakthrough. It could just be a mental breakthrough, right? You realize that your time is more valuable than what you're being paid right now. You would rather, you know, determine your own worth than having someone else determine your worth for you and tell you how much you're being worth per hour. That's why you got started with the business. Okay. So that right there will inspire people to take action instead of saying, you know, I made 10 grand per month, you know, join me and you you can make the money too. You see what I'm saying? It's like more inspiring that way right there, you guys. And um, one thing too, I just want to kind of touch on this really, really quick here is there's, there's, as you start to craft your story, right? You have the P AS, past pain problem, agitation, solution. And you go into that, whether it be a video through your storytelling or whether it be copywriting, you're like writing a Facebook status or you're posting something on Instagram, a picture with a little status right there or a Facebook ad, for example. Then you also want to have call to action. Okay, so there's two types of call to actions you can make. These are really important. There's a direct call to action, then there's indirect call to action, okay? So you want to kind of incorporate both. The indirect call to actions can be incorporated throughout your whole story. And I'll give you guys an example of each just so it makes sense to you. Okay, direct call to action, super simple, super easy. Like at the end of your video, uh, the end of your status, you create like a direct result that they want and you create a call to action. If they want to get the same results, they have to do X, Y, Z, right? They either have to comment, teach me on your post to get access to a free video, a webinar, or a training, you know, something that is going to allow them to achieve the dream lifestyle, or they have to click the link to go through your sales funnel to download a free ebook or to check out this video, whatever it may be. So a direct call to action would be, you know, uh, so if you got value out of this webinar or out of this video, then go ahead and click the link beneath this video and take action, get started today. You know, you're going to be able to join our personal team. You know, we're going to plug you in with our group so you can finally start living the lifestyle that you deserve. Okay. So that's just an example of direct call to action. I could probably construct something better if I like wrote it down, but an indirect call to action is a little bit sneakier, you guys, but this is like, it's automatic. It's going to get them to make the decision. So you're not telling them to get started. They're telling themselves. And I want you to understand the difference between the two with direct. You're telling them what to do with indirect. You kind of place these little things in their mind to where they tell themselves to click the link. So for example, you know, as I'm starting to talk here, you know, and as you start to listen to the words that I'm saying, you're going to feel yourself becoming motivated uh, to take action, right? You're going to feel yourself noticing beneath this video that there's a link. And as you click that link below, you're going to realize, you know, that the lifestyle you want is possible and the decision, you know, that you need to make in order to live the dream lifestyle becomes easier and easier and easier as you sit through this entire webinar. When you click that link, you're going to be able to join our personal team and get access to a lot of training that's going to help you achieve the lifestyle where you can provide a better future for your family. So I didn't tell, I didn't tell you directly to click the link. I said, as you feel yourself becoming more motivated to click the link. And when you do that, you're going to be able to X, Y, Z, get X, Y, Z results. So it's a little bit different there. Now I just kind of did that off the top of my head there. Like I said, if I took time to write it down, you can create better call the actions better indirect, but that's just like a quick little example uh, for you guys. I think um, one thing to chime on there too, like Nick, exactly what you were saying. Um, you know, you want to, you want to help people to link and take action and take the next step. And um, you know, whether you're using a Facebook post and Instagram post um, or really specifically videos, this works really well with videos is uh, Eric Worre, who is a, a network marketing trainer, for those that don't know him, he has a great book called GoPro, Seven Steps to, um, you know, I, I forget what it's called, Seven Steps to, you know, Winning Your Network Marketing Business or whatever it is, but really, really great book. I have the uh, audio book because, God forbid, I fucking read. I always <laughs> listen to audio books, but uh, it's narrated by him. Um, 
and he's a really, really good trainer. But he has this line. He said, and, and write this down too. This is a very easy, easy thing to memorize and just practice over and over. Um, but at the end of your video or as you're talking throughout your video or even just talking throughout, um, you know, your, your call to action at the end, if you say something along the lines of, if I fill in the blank, would you, okay? So if I would you, and memorize that because if you're thinking along the lines, you know, hey, if I were to give you my five steps to, you know, being a successful learner from home, would you next up and see what's on the next page? You know, so, hey, if I give you this, would you do this for me? And I know that was probably a shitty example, but, you know, it's something along the lines of, like, if you offer something to them, they almost feel compelled to do something in return from you. So it's, you know, it's a small form of uh, reciprocity where you're just offering them something in return for them doing something for you. So cool little tidbit right there. Perfect, perfect. I just had this pop in my mind too. Um, There's different communication styles as well that people follow. There's like three that I just want to touch on. It, one, number one is auditory. Number two is visual. Number three is kinesthetic. So there's different styles of learning that people respond to more. So first you have to realize what learning style and what you are. Are you an auditory? Are you more of a listener? For me, um, I'm more auditory, right? So that's why I don't like reading not very like visual. I can't sit in front of a book. I have to force myself to do it. I'd rather just plug in audios and start to listen. So within your marketing, you can even incorporate these tiny little things into your structure of your story to relate to certain types of people, right? So this is where you get like a little hypnotic here. So I'll give you guys a few examples to the best of my ability that I can here. So like auditory, I mean, think about it like in terms of the uh, alphabet, right? You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How did we memorize that when we were kids? We turn it into an auditory little song, right? with tune like a b c d e f g right and there's other songs and like children's stories that are incorporated into that so they memorize it a lot better right so we memorize like i say not facts but we our minds picture stuff and they group stuff in stories okay so when you are t speaking in auditory you could give an example like this it's like you know when i heard when i heard right so when i heard that you could make money online you know, with this specific business, XYZ, whether it's Amway or whatever it may be, you know, for the first time, it sounded, sounded too good to be true, you know, but once I listened to my mentor explain it all to me through this video that I heard on my way home from work, right, it made perfect sense and I got started right away. So that's just an example, right? So you're using words that relate to hearing, listening, right? Auditory. Now, visual is just scenes. Like when I saw this video online teaching you how to make money in the Forex market, right? I couldn't believe my eyes, you know? But after watching it, my mind was blown and it was made up that this was going to be the way that I was going to create financial freedom for myself and my family. And, you know, I decided to get started because I saw others living the lifestyle that I wanted to live. So it's little nuances like that, you guys, that you don't realize when you hear are hearing people speaking, but that's what's relating to them the most. Now, last is kinesthetic, right? Now, kinesthetic is feel. It's through movement and everything, okay? So it's like when I was first introduced to the network marketing industry, you know, it just felt right, you know, because I wanted to have a better lifestyle where, you know, I could travel the world and I could feel my feet sinking into the hot sand of the beaches of the world while my phone would vibrate, you know, with new commission notifications. And I felt you know, that it would be possible, you know, when I partnered up with my mentor, with this person, with this team, uh, you know, that was making great money, that was living a great lifestyle at the same time. So I took action, I got started and uh, I joined the business, right? So just like little things like that, little nuances, you guys, that allow you to be able to kind of like structure them and you can incorporate all of those into your marketing so you hit every single person you can hit the auditory you can hit the visual you can hit the kinesthetic now that's going to take some practice right you know like uh you know i've had to practice that over the years incorporating it into it just r start writing down different ways that you can do it and as you start to speak more you're just going to find it flowing through yourselves when you start to make your videos and you start to watch other people do it too you listen to them and then you start to take action it's just going to start to feel right you see so i just kind of incorporated it right there but it takes practice and you guys will get it over time Boom. Um, so we, I did get uh, official confirmation from Matt that uh, the <laughs> link, bless you, dude, uh, that the link works. So big announcement. 
I'm going to put the Google Drive link into the chat box. So you guys now have the hypnotic story structure. You can just copy and paste that or click on that. Um, solving the world's problems one at a time. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Uh, all right, so let's see. Dive into one of the, the questions here. I know Michael asked a question. Is there a difference between posting on Facebook and Instagram with that structure? I'm assuming you're saying with the hypnotic story structure. Um, Michael, I definitely think you can, but also realize that um, to Facebook as in like a Facebook ad, you can certainly expand on that and you could make it a little bit of a longer read, okay? But if you're going to do just like a regular post, I might a little more. Um, if you're going to do it on Instagram, I would really condense it because Instagram is very, you know, visual, sensory. People are just looking at pictures. So if you want to get somebody to really click on your picture or into your, your story, I would have a very, very compelling uh, picture that, um, or even some text on the picture pointing them down towards uh, your story. But to get somebody on Instagram to kind of stop and go and read that whole hypnotic story structure is going to be a little tough. So I would just kind of, you know, again, it's all about your, your target audience and who you're going after and who you're speaking to, but just figure out how you're going to do that and, and play around with it. You know, eventually you're not going to get it. It's not going to be a home run the first time you do it. Or, you know, maybe it will, but you're going to want to experiment. And, and uh... <clears throat> So, um, Nick, any other specifics that you wanted to uh, dive into or you guys want to get into? Uh, we've been on an hour now, so we could certainly dive into some of the Q&A. And, uh, Matt, I don't know if um, uh, you had anything that you wanted to chime in on there. I know uh, you're probably, probably way. Um, I think that a lot of what we've, that you and I personally have been talking about as far as the uh, story structure goes it seems like um, you know you were able to take some time use the hypnotic story structure and really craft um, you know story and I know that uh, you know you reached out to me earlier today and seemed like you're pretty fired up about it yeah yeah I was man I, I couldn't even really tell you how like stoked I was when I when I got it back you know what there's definitely like one uh, one point I'd like to stress on, and you know, it's kind of hard to interrupt uh, you and Nick with just the flow of how you guys feed off of each other. But um, you know, and I think it it kind of showed like how important the PASS acronym is, right? And like really narrowing and getting your story down specifically to you and like you know your why, because with crafting my, my story, you know, it, with with the structure that I, I used off of Dan's, it, it took me like hours to to fine tune and edit, and I hated it like over and over again. And I just kept going back to it and making sure like it just was me, like speaking through those words, you know. But more than just getting it down on you know on on notepad, and I suggest like writing it out, you know, because it comes more from the heart. But don't just like have it written down. Like you got to express that. Like read it out loud so you can make sure it sounds legit and you're not like sound like an idiot with a bunch of fragments, which it'll happen for sure, but, and I'm still going through this, like, obviously, it's my story, I know it, but if I'm going to speak it to you, like, for instance, on this, this webinar, I was kind of super nervy about it, you know, and I'll say that, when I first linked up with Dan, you know, I saw his videos, and I was like, dude, like, that's exactly what I'm going to do, so, like, what I did was, like, literally that day, I went out, and I never said I was going to do this. I bought a selfie stick and I went to the beach and I was like cruising around on this jetty just taking videos for like three hours and uh, you know I felt super awkward and I was really uncomfortable with myself on video but you know I just repetitiveness and just I kept after it and I started getting comfortable and I was happy with what I was with uh, what I was producing you know and I think that's what you know you need to work on if, if you're going to go and, and create a story that's potentially worth thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions because if you're creating it I think that's your goal like it should be worth that much money but you need to like you know act towards it and always put it into action and you know like Dan and Nick always say like it's ILT man like invest learn teach or some variation of that acronym like you need to put your plan 
into action, keep moving, and just get confident and comfortable with your story. So, like, you know, I can't really, you know, divulge in all the, the nuances that Dan and Nick get specifically, but, like, I will stress in, like, the simplified format of, like, get your story down and be unique and practice it. Get in front of the camera and then read it out loud so you make sure you don't sound like an idiot when you're speaking to a bunch of people on a webinar. But, uh, you know, that's really all I got for that. And that's gold, man, because that's what I did when I was first starting. I remember my first business actually wrote it down. Now, this will be the transition phase that you guys will go through is first things first, you'll write it all down, right? You'll have it like word for word, your exact story. And it's going to take up like, you know, like three pages in a notebook. And then in order, like you think you have to memorize the whole thing, right? So you go through and you like recite it in the shower, you know, you like say in front of the mirror, whatever it may be, just to keep repeating it to yourself. And I remember the first time I hopped on a call with someone to explain the business because my upline wasn't available for a three-way call I butchered it right because I was trying to be perfect right people don't want perfection they want progress right and practice doesn't make perfect practice makes progress perfect practice eventually will lead to perfect progress but at the same time you have this first phase where you write everything down word for word right then as you start to transition you kind of scrap that and then you just speak from the heart right? You speak from the heart. And you guys have noticed, like if you guys have hopped on a lot of our webinars that I've told my story, it's not the same every single time. Like I have these key points. So what I do now, and this is the transition phase to kind of make it so you're speaking more from the heart instead of from up here, is you have bullet points, right? So like the PAS, you pick one point, one situation from your past that caused a lot of pain. So maybe it was, you know, you were standing in line at, you know, a grocery store uh, to pay for groceries and, you know, you swiped your credit card and it was declined. And just that feeling in your gut where you're like, this is never going to happen to me again. Right. So that's a good bullet point. These major pinpoints in your life that you can just incorporate into there. And then the words in between, you guys, the words in between don't really matter. Like what I'm saying in between these main points that I'm making, they don't matter. It's as long as you have these main points, then you're speaking from the heart. It's like when the brain and the heart connects and it flows out your mouth, that's when like people really get inspired by that. So as you just start to expand on your story, it's going to flow a lot smoother. The first time you do it, second time, the third time, you're gonna butcher it, right? You're gonna butcher it. You're gonna be so nervous on video. You know, I remember when I was like making videos in public, I went to New York, right, for one of our company's event. We went to the top of the Empire State Building and it was packed, dude, fucking packed. There were so many people in there. You're literally shoulder to shoulder, like in the elevator, get up to the top floor and it's packed. Like you couldn't even move around really. And I was like, Oh, screw it. I'm going to do a video here, like a video in public. And I stood up in front of the, one of the windows. You couldn't see all the people because it was like through the window overlooking the whole city. And I just started talking and it was like a five minute video where I just started going off about my whole story, you know, the business, all this stuff. It was a pretty amateur video. But what happened was when I started speaking, the whole room went silent. There were probably like 60, 70 people there. They went silent and immediately I started getting nervous. I started saying you guys a lot and you know, you know this, you know that. And it's just like, I started saying like a lot too. And as soon as I was done, there were like four people that were just like, <laughs> so it was like, after I was done with that, it was super nerve wracking. But at the same time, it forced me to put myself in that uncomfortable situation. Because if you're not growing, if you're not forcing yourself to become uncomfortable, then you're never going to grow in your business. You're never going to get to that next level. And you're going to find when you're putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations, that's when you're the most happy, right? That's when you're progressing. Because Tony Robbins says, you know, progress is what leads to happiness. So as long as you're progressing, as long as you're moving forward, that's the key to everything, you guys. And your story is one in 7.4 billion, right? There's no one else out there that has a story like you. So understand that it's unique, right? You know, if you want to model and take things from other people's story and incorporate it into your own, that's okay. That's cool. Then you develop your own style. That's what Eric Warre did, right? He just listened to his mentor. And if you say what people say, you do what they do, you get what they get. So he just literally said everything that they said and just made it his own story. And as he started to expand and grow, then he started incorporating his own unique examples, his own unique analogies, his own unique metaphors and all this stuff into his story. So it started to grow from him. But just share your vision, you guys. Share with other people out there. And uh, there's this one quote, you know, that just popped in my mind right now. It's, People follow leaders who know where they're going, who know what they want, and who can help other people get there, right? And if you don't stand for something, then you're going to fall 
for anything, right? So as long as you have your core values, as long as you have your why, as long as you have a vision that you want and you just speak that into other people, you don't have to focus and worry about the specifics. Like the specifics are cool. They're good to have that structure. But most of the time when I'm posting stuff up there, I focus less on the structure and I focus more on the principles and those key points. And then I just flow. And that allows me to get out of my own head and wonder like, oh crap, is this structure, is this hypnotic story structure perfect? If it's not perfect, I'm not going to get results, right? You see what I'm saying? So get out of your head, get into your heart, and it'll just start flowing through you. That was, uh, that was like uh, righteous right there. <laughs> um, um, all right, a couple of, couple of quick questions. Um, James asked if you could use the, I'm assuming the um, structure in Facebook groups. Uh, if you're, I mean, for me, the structure itself tells my own personal story and I use it for advertising and on uh, you know, my target audience and I blast that out into the, the Facebook world. I go after a specific audience. Now, if you're using that in a group, it, I guess it's it, honestly, James, it's really, really tough because it depends on what type of group you're in. Um, let's just say, you know, uh, you know, we're all in uh, digital altitude. If we were in uh, the digital altitude group or a group of like affiliate marketers and they were 10,000 people in this group and I'm going to put my story ad out there. I mean, ultimately you're telling your story because you want people to, you know, buy into what you're doing. So if you're trying to get them to click on a link or, or you want to get them away from that group, I would just be, I personally, for me, I, I wouldn't do it. I'd be very cautious as to what the intention is by using it in a group. Um, but you know, food for thought. I would just, I would just be careful with something like that. Um, uh, let's see. Rob says um, leverage of others because uh, I think let me go back to his question real quick and see if I can find it. <clears throat> okay, so he says like if if I'm starting in business and so people chimed in and said no, definitely not. So you know, you definitely don't want to don't want to lie and you definitely don't want to uh, make shit up or make yourself, you know, a lot bigger than you really are. And what you want to be able to do is, is what you can do is leverage other people. And I know, I think uh, Richard had said in here somewhere, can we expand on that? So uh, I don't know if I'll give a perfect example, but things that you could do is if you're getting into the hypnotic story structure and you're going in for that lead, you know, that hook line and sinker, that lead line, you could say something along the lines of it told me three months ago that I would have, you know, found my career path and been able to work from home and spend time with my family. I would have told you were, uh, you were nuts and I haven't reached that or haven't reached that point yet, but I'm on my way. I've mentored or I found a partner online and, you know, reference a name, make it real. I've referenced um, I found this guy online named Nick, who's the same age as me and is having unbelievable results. And in the past five weeks, since I've been working with them, I'm actually starting to see the bigger picture. So I know if you partner with us and join our group, you'll be able to see some of the same results that I'm already seeing. And you'll be able to get to see the same and live the same lifestyle that Nick does because he's been crushing it for the last two years. And if he can do it, I know I can do it. And I you know you can do it too. But you want to be able to able to leverage other people in the beginning until you start to get some momentum. And even, I mean, Christ, like even if you start out day one, if today was your very first day and two weeks from now you got based off of the story that you're telling, you could leverage those 10 leads because there's people out there that have zero leads. Sign up on your story. You know, hey, I never thought that people would want to follow me based on, you know, what the story that I had to tell. I thought I was just some Joe Schmo. And it turns out I was able to share with, you know, I was able to share what I had with people. And, you know, people are actually starting to respond and it makes me feel great. So um, you could word it so many different ways, but you always want to, in the beginning, it's always great to leverage other people. Yeah, don't be the message, be the messenger. 
right? So like in the beginning when I was saying, I didn't come up with story structures. I didn't come up with storytelling. I had a mentor who taught me, right? And then other people will leverage my success. And then as you start to have success, other people will leverage your success, right? It's the same principles behind a three-way call. If you guys have ever done three-way calls before, when I used to teach three-way calls to people, I would tell them, look, when you get your friend, I don't like to call them prospects, you know, your friend, whoever it is that you've introduced to the business on the phone, what you do is you're the bridge, right? You say, hey, listen, you know, Sam, this is my upline Nick, you know, and then this is where you edify. And it's not to boost our egos. It's so simply you can take the pressure off of yourself and put it onto us, right? So you don't want your friend to be looking at you like, how much have you made, right? And I'm sure you guys have heard that objection before, right? How much have you made? How much are you making right now? Instead of being like, well, I'm not making anything, people are like, okay, well, then why would I join you? Instead, you know, a best way to put it is, listen, I just got started with this business, but so I haven't really made much yet, but I've partnered myself with this guy right here. You know, then this is where you edify. I partnered myself with this person right there. And they've made, you know, crazy amounts of income, but more importantly than the money, it's not about the money, it's about the freedom that the money provides they left their job. They don't have a job anymore. They literally travel the world. And that's what I want for my life. That's what I want not only for me, but for my family. So we can be able to do the same thing. And listen, I already know that I'm going to accomplish that within the next year. So I'm sharing this with you now and I'm doing the due de the decency of sharing this with you now. So when I do become successful a year from now, you don't look back, you don't look at me and say, I thought we were good friends. Why didn't you share this with me, man? So I'm sharing this with you now just so you know that when I do become successful, I want you there with me. You see the difference in that posture right there? Instead of saying, please join this business with me. I know we're going to become successful. Please do this with me. Here's my link. Please join. It's like, look, I'm already becoming successful because I'm partnered with this person right there that's getting results. If you want to be a part of it, great. He'll show you just like he's showing me how to become successful. If not, if you don't, then that's great too. Continue doing what you're doing. If you come back to me, you know, down the road, uh, you know, it's still doors, doors always open, but I'd rather have you get started with it now so you don't regret it down the road. So awesome. that right there, okay, hold on. I'm just trying to see the comments here as well. Um, Throw your comments comments in, you guys. Um, you know, because we'll be on for like the next 10, 15 minutes just answering them for you. And then uh, you know, Dan will post up the recording as well for this so you guys can refer back to everything. Time okay, Richard. Know, uh, Richard, Richard yeah, had yeah, he said time limit for the story video. Yep. Um it really depends. If you're brand new, the shorter the better. Um, if you're more experienced, you can go on for like an hour if you want, and people will still pay attention if you're captivating enough and you have good enough stories. But generally three minutes or less is good. Like right around one to two minutes is, is perfect for it. If you can keep it short, sweet to the point, and then just get out of the way and edify, then you know that will produce you the best results. I also think too, it depends on um, it depends on where that video is and what specifically what you're using it for. So as an example, like if you're gonna use it as a bridge video to get somebody off of Facebook onto, say, like your funnel, your sales funnel then yeah, to what Nick was saying, I mean, you want to keep it one and a half, two, th absolute three minutes max. But if you're going to use that as, um, let's say you're going to use that as more of like a thing, you know, uh, maybe on a sales page or something like that, where you already have captivated the audience, you've already through your capture page, so now you have a little more of their attention, then you could probably expand on that and maybe talk a little bit longer but uh, I would just think, you know, Richard, just think about where that video is going to be and how you're going to use it. And that would also, um, you know, dictate your timeline as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a value video, you can go as long as you want. But if it's a specific video, like Dan was saying on your capture page, shorter the better. Like on my main capture page, I think it's three minutes right around there. And it just has like different lifestyle shots with voiceover on it too. So I even like doing that captivates them, but keeping it shorter. So because people's time is limited. Right. You know, people don't have all day, especially if they're like driving in their car or something and immediately they like say they see a post on Facebook. Right. Um, you know, for the copywriting, they don't have time to go and read that whole thing. So like a quick little video where you get the main points across, you give a quick little call to action. Those are good for more marketing videos. But for branding, like that's good for leads. Right. If you're giving quick call to actions, but for branding and long term, like if you go more in depth with your content, explaining different nuances, and everything like that in your marketing, that's where people really connect with you. And that's where your brand and your following grows massive. Like I've been following people on YouTube, like um, RSD, if you type in those guys, like they're 
brand is huge. Like it's growing bigger and bigger and bigger because they go into the little specific nuances of like, you know, social, like just the social aspect of life and interacting with people and all that stuff and the mindset of personal development and how that relates to social conditioning and everything and how to get past all that, which is pretty crazy. So I, that's why like, I'm always referring back to their stuff. You know, the people that are just like generic, quick tip, typical stuff. It's good for like just generating leads, but it doesn't build depth. Like you want width and you want depth too. So you want to reach a lot of people with as many videos as possible, but you also want quality videos too. So it's not just like noise. Cause I see a lot of people out there that have, and this is me as well. This is what I'm overcoming as well. People that have hundreds of videos, but have little to no followers, right? Because they're just focusing on the surface level stuff but then the people that go deeper right into the little nuances within their marketing within their content sharing like principles and philosophies that they're learning and personal development books that they've learned through audios that they've listened to and all that stuff then that really expands your horizons much larger so where there's people out there that are like big like bloggers or something for example like they're focusing on major entertainment their followings grow so quick like so quick and everything just because they have like quality content and they're just you're just getting to know them a lot better so let's see what are the best places to tell the stories other than youtube videos i mean i would say pick one or two social media platforms and just stay consistent on those you don't need to be on every single social media platform telling a bunch of stories like i was saying i started with you know youtube and facebook right I added Instagram. Instagram is, isn't as great to tell stories because like Dan was saying, um, is hundred percent true. It's visual. That's mostly a visual app. Like Facebook is more, um, you know, uh, what, what is it visual as well? And like people that read and focus on that YouTube is like auditory. So they're listening to, and they're watching as well. So I would recommend like YouTube and Facebook, those two right there. Like you can create six figure income and beyond that just with those two, because they're the largest platforms out there pretty much. Yeah, I, I would agree with that 100%. I, I wouldn't go much much beyond YouTube and Facebook. And even on Facebook, I would be very specific as to where and when I was going to use it. Um, for me, it's Facebook advertising and advertising only. It's not something that I'm going to put in like an everyday post. Um, you know, for me, everyday posts are just kind of quick motivational, um, you know, things to, to spike interest. But um, Facebook advertising and YouTube, not, not to say that it won't work in other places. Um, I, you know what? Actually, I think digress. I think could work, um, and it could work effectively if you did it right. Um, is when you're emailing your list. I think if you put it into your email list, mm -hmm. um, and um, also, you know, just preface how you title your your subject line. Uh, you know, what's what's the clickbait that's going to get people to open that email, and then. You know, obviously, just making sure that you uh, lead off and, and follow the story structure, but you could definitely send it to your list as well. And I noticed too that, like, the simpler the subject line on an email, the better. Like, I've just been saying, What's up on my subject line? That gets like crazy open rates because, you know, when you're talking, it, it, like you were saying, Dan, in the beginning, if you're talking to as if you're talking to a large audience of people, you're not going to relate with anyone really because the reality is when someone's watching your video, it's not a massive group of people. Sure. There might be two or three people sitting at a desk watching it, but it's every view, every person that watches a video, every person that reads your Facebook ad, it's one person on their phone or their computer looking at it. So if you speak as if you're speaking directly to that perfect customer that you have, you're going to wash out all the people that aren't interested you know, the people that are tire kickers, the people that aren't going to join your business or aren't going to do anything. And you're going to zone in and focus in and narrow in on the people that are really committed to, you know, getting started with your business, committed to the message that you have and that you're sharing out there. So let's see. True, true, true. I don't know. Um, so I think that being said, um, Megan, I don't know. She says, uh, I have a network marketing business that focuses on home parties and having inventory on hand. However, I'd love to do, uh, be moving to doing all online. Is this method last week's ad something that can replace that? Um, you know, for me, a hundred percent. Um, I think, uh, you know, some people like doing the home and somebody, uh, marketing, but I think online is the way to go. And if that's something that you want to transition from and start using, uh, you know, I don't know if Megan, your question was, can you use Facebook advertising for your network marketing business and use the story structure to kind of sell that? 
Uh, if that's the case, then yes, you definitely could. But I would also be very, very careful um, in network marketing companies and um, make money online opportunities with Facebook advertising because Facebook hates that sort of thing. So you want to get them off of Facebook, maybe onto like a bridge page where you're telling your story or you're telling, you know, you're talking in a video and sharing them and then getting them to click on a link and go a little deeper further into your story. So just something to think about there. 100% and do both. If you enjoy, Megan, if you enjoy doing the, you know, home parties and stuff offline, then keep doing it. Like this isn't by any means like the end all be all like online marketing. It's great. I believe and Dan believe we all believe that this is the way of the future, but at the same time, offline marketing still works, right? Like I said in the beginning, the stuff that I was taught, like the home events and all that stuff, they work, but I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. Like I didn't enjoy it. I, I enjoyed the process of the person that I was becoming to speak in front of a room of people and what I was learning from that. But if I had to continue and create a career out of doing that, driving from city to city, state to state, nonstop to maintain my business, my income, my team and everything and keep it all going. I would drive myself insane from doing that. So as you start to transition, like Dan was saying into online, start applying the principles that we've taught you, right? So don't focus so much on the specifics, like the specific stuff, focus on the main principles of copywriting, storytelling, and then just get your face out there. Like one thing that one of my mentors told me in the past, he says, brand what you're doing offline online, right? So if you're doing like home events and stuff in public, you can like set up a camera in the corner of the room that no one will really notice, you know, set up a few different angles, maybe record the whole event and then rank it on YouTube for the keyword. Like let's say it's Amway, right? Or world ventures, world ventures review. You can rank it using my YouTube ranking strategy and then just throw it up there. And that video will start getting views, you know, hundreds of views and everything. So just do that, incorporate both. Like you incorporate both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You see, like for me, primarily online because that's what I love to do. But then at the same time, it's like I'll travel offline, I'll make videos and lifestyle and stuff and then just incorporate that so you can put it both together. Um, I think Dave asked a question, do any of us pay for um, to have SEO help uh, getting ranked? I know for me, I do uh, Google. I don't do Google SEO. Uh, but one thing that um, I recently tried, now I know um, you know, both Nick and myself uh, use YouTube and we specifically use certain keywords and um, even what we, we covered a couple weeks ago when we had Josh um, and we were talking about video marketing, specifically how to rank using YouTube SEO to rank our videos and get them on the, fr the front pages. And we do that and you can do that for free. Um, one of the things that I recently tried paid SEO with YouTube, I took one video it was actually the, um, the the mastery marketing event that we went to in uh, Vegas. I made a kind of collage video and, a, and a, I guess you can call it like a testimonial video from there. And at the time, I had, I had like 400 views. And I said, you know, what the hell, I wanted to try YouTube advertising. So I just decided to do five bucks a day. And you actually do... Um, when you do the, uh, YouTube advertising, you do it through Google keywords. Just at five bucks a day. It's just nothing. Just all I want to do is just doing from 400 views to 4,400 views. So 4,000 views literally in three weeks. And I can already see in uh, my leads in AWeber that are signing up through the link because I have the, the link specifically the Dropbox in that YouTube video I have it tagged so I can see when people come into digital altitude and I can also see uh, when they come in as a lead and that yes it is working so um, those definitely want to look into free methods to rank your videos and if you get into paid I would start small just try you know a couple bucks five bucks a day um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Dan. You know, branding what you did offline, like that event, and then just throwing it online, ranking it for the keyword digital altitude, digital altitude review. And then when people look into it, like for example, you guys, so someone that's looking into your company, you know, what they're going to do is they're just going to type stuff on Google and YouTube, right? They're going to search it, search it. Like, let's say they 
the company. They're just like digital altitude, make thousands of dollars online. And of course they're not going to join that person because that's not the right way to promote. But what they're going to do, they're like, hmm, digital altitude. I wonder what this is. They're going to go on YouTube. They're going to type that in. So it could be any company, right? They're going to type that in and they're going to end up on a video, right? And if you incorporate this story structure, storytelling into your video, you'd be charismatic, exciting confident in what you're doing. You give a call to action, right? To click the link below, to add you on Facebook and to go through your funnel. Then guess what happens is there, all these people are going to start coming to you and they're going to see you as the leader that they want to join for that. Okay. And if you guys just focus on just that alone, like just making YouTube videos, like I had phases where I would go and I would just straight up make a YouTube video a day for like two months straight. And then it would kind of like, I would stop for a little bit and I'd make like two videos a week. Right. And I kind of slow down to maybe one video a week to maintain it and then focus on Facebook for a bit, bit. But if you just focus on ranking videos on YouTube using the story structure and just putting them out there over the course of a year, even if you do two videos a week, like two videos a week for a year, you will be blown away, not only with the results, but your ability to speak and influence people and hypnotically sell through your story. Like your speaking ability will improve dramatically. Like if you guys have heard my story of transformation, like, you know, being an introvert, being a quiet guy, you know, I'm naturally quiet in person. Like I don't say much, right? I'm very observant of everything that's going on. But when it comes in terms of marketing, you know, how I have true. a lot I'm to say, person. <laughs> you know, I just literally like just comes through practice, you guys. And like I say, I'm not perfect, you know, just an average guy that takes above average action on a consistent basis. And over time, those efforts compound and then that's where you're going to be able to stand out and outshine your competition. Like Jim Rohn says, you know, if me and you have a competition, a 30 day competition, I will beat you even if you're better. It's like, how do you beat someone that's better than you? That's a better closer, master closer, master NLP, been with the game for 10 plus years. You're brand new. How do you beat them? Right? Well, he says it in terms of prospecting, I'll give you guys an example in terms of making video, right? Well, let's say he makes one video and that master closer makes one video, ranks it on YouTube or Google, whatever it may be, and the video is amazing, but you make a hundred videos, right? And that one video he makes gets, you know, a hundred, maybe thousand views. The hundred videos that you make each get, you know, 10 views, 10, 20 views, right? You'll beat someone else that way, right? And then as you start to expand, your quality and your content will just get better and better and better and better. But, uh, Saku, I think that's how you say your name. You see, he just said, what's DA? DA is digital altitude. That's just our primary business that we're a part of. And that's what we're marketing. But our intention for these webinars that we're doing is to teach anyone in any business uh, and to help you guys kind of expand whatever it is that you're doing. You know, whether you're in network marketing, affiliate marketing, like even real estate, maybe you're underwater basket weaver, right? You're just trying to sell more of your baskets online, you know? I know uh, Nick asked, uh, what's the best traffic source that's used for online sales pro? Um, I think uh, see that that's kind of a tough one. I know some people had really good results with Facebook advertising. Um, I know Nick has had some good results with Facebook advertising and you know, other methods too. For me, um, I've had good results with Instagram. Um, and why I've had such good results with Instagram is as I go after a very specific targeted niche, um, I have four Instagram accounts. One of them is titled to a specific network marketing company and the hashtags I use, the pictures I use, the terminology that I use, and also the link in my bio is all targeted at that one single network marketing company. And it goes from there into a bridge page where there's a video of me wearing a sweatshirt from that network marketing company. And then it goes from there into or take his videos. So I mean, that's um, to blankly that's targeted like a motherfucker. So <laughs> the more targeted you could get, and that's why that one Instagram account works really, really well. I've also had, um, with YouTube, I have one video that's targeted for online sales pro keywords and it has um, a little over 4,000 views and I get a lot of, I get a lot of leads from that too. So um, that for me has worked. I've tried, you know, personally for me, I've tried Facebook advertising for online sales pro and an okay result. I've probably tried eight now six, seven, eight different ads. I've let them run for a handful of days. 
and then I just shut them down because I'm not getting the uh, I'm not getting the results. I know there's other people out there like Joel and uh, and um, Kevin and some of those other guys, uh, Grady that are that are doing Facebook advertising for online sales sales pro are fucking crushing it. They're like literally crushing it. Um, you know, I'm I haven't reached that level yet. Yeah. And the, like you're saying, Dan, I mean, as long as you focus on something long term, like the best strategy, the best way to generate traffic is to focus on one thing long term, right? Your best lead source will be the one you put the most time, effort, and energy into, right? There isn't a specific one. Like I know people out there that make millions a month through Facebook ads. I know people out there that make millions a month using Snapchat, people out there that make millions of millions a month using Instagram, right? So it just really depends on which one you enjoy the most. You know, so like for me, I saw people blogging. I didn't like blogging. I don't like writing that much. I'll do it just because it's an important skill to have to type emails and all that stuff. But I'd rather outsource it. You see what I'm saying? Like one thing that I'm passionate about is speaking, making videos. So that's why you like YouTube is the bread and butter for everything right there. And then YouTube, when it transitions and you start generating leads from there to your email list, then you can work on the copywriting and kind of structuring your stuff based on what other people have. So like, uh, who said this real quick? Hold on a second. There was, um, I think it was James right here. Okay, James. Yeah. Do you guys have, do we have a structured follow-up email or do we wing it? Combo of both. Um, you want to have like the automatic, the auto sequence set up being structured. And the best way that I would say to structure that is to read Russell Brunson's book, dot com secrets. And I'll just go ahead and throw that in the chat com secrets in that right there he has the soap opera sequence is what it's called and the soap opera sequence is following the storytelling formula in a way to where it engages people and it captivates them through kind of like the hollywood narrative of storytelling right and you have those through the autoresponder sequence then what happens is when people receive all those emails after five days seven days whatever it may be then you can kind of wing it with your content but you're winging it is just like the ideas that you come up with the fly and then you just incorporate the principles of the pas formula right the pass into your emails driving them either to a youtube video if you are a blogger, you drive them to your blog, right? So you can get more people, more eyes on that. And then just the more content that you have, right? You just keep constructing emails. So like for me, I just go through like kind of like inspiration, right? So I don't have like, I'm not a structured person at all. Like if you guys see my desk right now, it's, it's a shit show. It's pretty messy. And I got crap everywhere. So I'm just more free flowing. So capitalize on your strength and everything and then you know that's why like if you're structured you can structure your emails in a way where you have like bullet points and all this stuff but if you're more free-flowing then you can just kind of like ramble and rant and tell stuff about what you hate what you like you know trending topics and all that stuff and then that'll captivate people and just keep them engaged right because the person that's just creating the most content staying in front of your audience the most always wins like the way the online world is moving the way that it's growing if you're not consistent you're going to literally get washed away. The people out there that are running circles around all of us, right? I know you guys are on here to learn from us, but the people out there that are running circles around all of us, making millions per day, are just literally like capitalizing on the fact that most people out there are lazy, right? So they're just creating as much content as possible, quality content, and they're just distributing it out there to where everyone sees it. Right. You know, like CNN, they're nonstop, like news reports, even though that what they're saying, like, I don't even watch CNN. Right. You know that what they're saying isn't really true half the time. You know, they're just focused on ratings and reviews and like just who's first, you know, news and media and everything. They're focused more on who's first rather than who's right and who, what's true. Right. But they're just putting out so much content every single day that people plug into that and they watch their TV every day. So if you're putting out stuff every day, you're going to win regardless. I want to I want to chime in on a little uh, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, quote there too because literally on what you said about CNN it's like we are as as a society as individuals as you know our own our own person we are really really strong okay we're really strong individuals uh, we're strong mentally we're strong you know in our hearts but there is a lot of money telling us that we're not that we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not, you know, whatever, strong enough, whatever it is. There's so much fucking advertising dollars telling us that we suck. And watch the news and you watch commercials. I mean, it's all pitches to, you know, buy into other stuff that's going to make you better or, you know, obviously want to invest in their product. But, um, you know, we have so much potential uh, as individuals and 
we don't take that step to start our own business, why we uh, why we get defeated sometimes is because you know we're too worried about what people think. Past that, and once you like make that decision that I'm not going to give a fuck, think you know you can you can take on anything. You'll, you know, as long as you never quit, you'll find success. Mm -hmm. That's true, man. People are starving for authenticity nowadays, right? So many people out there just spitting bullshit, right? You know, just saying stuff to be PC, politically correct, right? You know, that's all the news media is. It's like, you know, they're just being politically correct. They're too afraid to say what's true, what's real. It's like Donald Trump, for example. He doesn't care about being politically correct. He will literally say, like, anything that's on his mind, even if it's not necessarily, like, the right thing to agree with. You know what I'm saying? But that's why people respect him. You know, that's why he got elected, because he's not afraid to speak the truth, right? He was calling out the media and the bias that they had towards Hillary Clinton during the election. Right, if you guys saw it, if you saw the election, what happened was, you know, when that, what was the comment that he made? I was cracking up for it. He's like, Hil Hillary said, you know, it's glad that, you know, we're, you're not president. And he said, because you'd be put in jail and the whole crowd started like cheering and immediately the media quieted the crowd. They're like, quiet, you know, we need to keep this thing moving. And then when Hillary said something, the crowd started cheering, they just let him go. And then Donald, you know, he didn't shut up on that. He actually called it out. And because he called that out, that actually makes people respect him more for that. So if you guys are willing to call out the bullshit, if you guys are willing to speak your heart your, with your heart, if you're willing to speak the truth, other people will appreciate you for that. Even if sometimes like you kind of screw up, you say some things that you shouldn't have said, you know, like Donald Trump has definitely said a lot of things they shouldn't have said, just, but just because he's willing to put himself on that chopping block and put himself out there, that's why I believe that he won, you know? And it's like Hillary Clinton, no, not at all. She's a people pleaser, right? She's trying to please the people. And it's like some people like that, some people don't, right? You know, but what I appreciate is someone that's authentic, someone that's real, someone that's not afraid to say the truth, even if it puts their reputation, their brand on the line, and they might lose a few followers for that because it polarizes too. So anything like you, you guys want to throw on that? I know uh, Matt, you've been a little quiet, man, but anything you want to touch on as well? I'm sure, man. You, you kind of touched on, on it earlier, you know, and you said how you were, you know, an introvert, like you're really good at speaking on you know, webinars, YouTube, you just crush it, man. You have the gift of gab and you just kind of get in a rhythm and flow. You know, for me, I'm, and I'm kind of speaking to the people that are like brand new, you're just getting started or you're feeling kind of lost in the sauce. Like for me in public, in front of people, I'm super outgoing. I'm kind of a shithead because, you know, I just don't shut up. But, you know, in learning, you know, my place in online marketing, I'm kind of quiet, you know, as I'm, as I'm, I'm finding my, my spot and, you know, getting this knowledge. And I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to be me. You know, hey, and, Matt. Hey, Matt. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me chime in for one second here, dude. Um, I don't know about you guys. I'm getting this nasty fucking echo. I can hear like it's crazy delay on my voice, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mute yourselves for a second, but um, so I just want to say that in regards to uh, in regards to Matt, I mean he two now. I think I've 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 really known Matt, and I can just tell you that um, whenever you start in the online marketing niche, like perfect right out of the gate, and just literally in a short two month time, I've seen so much growth from Matt as, as an individual, just, you know, from the, the, uh, you know, the phone conversations we've had, we've done a couple of, you know, Skypes and, and real quick hangouts, just talking about what's going on and talking about the story structure. And, you know, for you guys that are out there watching this and go, oh, I can't do videos or I'm not comfortable doing videos well you know neither was Matt and he told you his story earlier like he was driving along the beach and he just decided to jump out and walk along the beach and shoot a video it's like you know part of what we're offering here to you guys is this teaching and this training and this coaching and it's like you know Matt shot a video he sent it to me and he wanted some honest feedback so I watched it I gave him some honest feedback and then he shot another video and another video and another video. And then as I started watching his videos, I was like, shit, this guy's starting to get fucking good, you know? And, you know, he's doing this and then he's seeing growth with his story and being able to tell his story, and craft a story. And now, you know, his story is like fucking rock solid. Just in such a short amount of time, 
for action, plugging into the system, going through the training steps, staying consistent, and pushing themselves to do more. I mean, even just in a short two months, dude, I've seen so much growth from you. And I know that 2017, you're going to fucking crush it, dude, because you made the decision, you're determined, and I know nothing's going to stop you. So just hats off, man. Awesome job. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate that, Dan. Anytime, dude. Anytime. Yeah, and if anyone's out there doubting it, like, you know, like I was when I first got started, if you have any of those thoughts of, thoughts of doubt, it's all just fucking bullshit, man. Like, I was so embarrassed to go on the beach, and there was a bunch of people on the beach just watching me film this video with a selfie stick. And I even had this one chick, like, I walked by her, and she's like, what are you doing? And uh, I got so defensive, and I was like, what are you doing? You know? But, and I just kept going. I'm like, that's the wrong attitude. But, you know, I was so embarrassed, but I just kept walking. And I walked, like, two miles away from my car. And, Dude, no shit. Like when I turned around on the way back, I was like getting comfortable and just really feeling it. And like that's just my advice to you. Just get on camera and just start getting comfortable. It's like the Matrix too. It's like that scene where he's walking and, you know, once he notices the girl in the red dress, everyone in the suits turns and looks like, what are you doing? 100%. It's, because it's, it's, it's all social conditioning. You know what I'm saying? All social conditioning where when you start to step out from the norm, like Darren Hardy says, the, the crab trap, right? You know, the crab traps where, if you guys have heard this before, you know, there's a, there's a type of crab that's so quick that it can escape most traps, right? Because it's clever. Well, what they do is they create like a square little cage. They put it at the bottom of the ocean with a hole at the top where they put a little bait in the bottom and crabs, they're free to crawl in, eat, free to go, right? You know, doors open, all you can eat buffet, golden corral style, right? And what happens is one crab comes in, another crab comes in, pretty soon the whole pot's full, all the food's gone. And when one crab decides, well, why would I sit here anymore? There's no more food and it's crowded like a subway train, right? I'm going to climb out of this thing. It starts to climb out. All the other crabs will pull it back down. Like you can't leave the herd, right? You can't leave the herd. And what'll happen is if, if it keeps trying to climb out, they'll pull it down and it'll eventually rip its legs off and, and kill it. If it keeps trying to escape and sometimes in your business you'll feel like that's the same way whether you're filming a video on a beach and other people are staring at you whether you're taking action in your business you're hearing like little smart remarks from your family your friends of oh you you trying that network mark i tried that and that didn't work for me why do you think it'll work for you right so they're trying to pull you back down into the trap but as long as you keep climbing you just hear their opinions you're just like cool that's the way that you believe that's fine that's not the way that I believe I'm going to keep going instead of getting defensive and being like starting arguments with them. Cause that's what they really want. Right. When people poke fun at you, they, they call it like poking the bear. What they really want is they want you to start arguing back with them. So then they can, you know, justify why arguing is like a good thing and why, you know, it's just going to like kill time for them. And they're like, Oh yeah, just to piss people off. Right. But if you're just like, no, nah, that's cool. If someone like tries to argue with me about network marketing now, when I used to, get the, these type of remarks, I would get very defensive about it. Like that's, this is a pyramid scheme. I'm like, no, it's not a pyramid scheme because it's sponsored by this company. It's sponsored by this person. Like David Beckham has it on his soccer Jersey and all this stuff. And I get pissed. Now someone's like, it's a pyramid scheme. I'm like, cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Solid. Or I just even respond like, are you, you're not, you're not that dumb. Are you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just don't worry about it, you guys. People will have the smart remarks and everything, but just realize where you're going. You have your vision that you're holding on to, and you're going to make it there regardless of what other people say. Yeah, no doubt. And I'll tell you a thing, uh, you know, things. Um, I want to tack on to something that um, Matt said a while back. But, uh, yeah, with running my, my Facebook ads, and you know, probably, I don't know, once a day, or, uh, you know, every other day, sometimes it's a couple times a day, there's always some, you know, somebody that knows everything. And, uh, you know, there was even this guy that was literally just, had to, he just thought he was like beating me down yesterday where he's like, he's like, you really, and he put this right in the comment of the, uh, of the ad on Facebook. And he's like, do you really expect anybody to believe this shit? You should be ashamed of yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> You really have no fucking clue. So it's like, and I could, I could respond. I could get fired up. I could be like, Oh fuck you. You have no fucking clue. You piece of shit. But it's like, <laughs> go, I go, so you want right to, click, yeah. I go right click, right click, delete. 
done walk away you know it's like just don't let that shit get to you you give them the satisfaction of a response you know yeah you know once you once you start feeding into it it's like that's what they want they want that response they want it they want to just like tell you like how knowledgeable they are with your business tell me all family and my history and it's like whatever so yeah anyway one thing that irritates irritates people more than responding to them to comments like that is not responding to them like i'll get emails too of people saying like like you scammer, blah, 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 blah. And you could respond and be like, go negative towards them. But then I just respond back. Cool. Like, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. In case you're (laughs) interested, the unsubscribe button's below. (laughs) Seriously, kill them with kindness or just don't even respond whatsoever. Like they say, you know, if you can block certain thoughts that you have, negative thoughts, use the block button on those thoughts and use the block button in real life. You know, sometimes block people that are so negative that, you know, aren't, empowering you aren't lifting you up whatsoever it's just like cool thanks you know appreciate the feedback it's like now now leave <laughs> it's like you know Jefferson, have a great day <laughs> yeah. you like some fries with that but uh yeah i know yeah you want some fries um uh matt said something earlier about um you know when you're when you guys are uh using the hypnotic story structure when you when you guys write your story um it, it might sound a little corny but it's really going to help you in the long run is stand in front of a mirror and read your story out loud because also once you start hearing yourself speak and you start hearing the story start to flow you're gonna you're gonna know what parts of it sound really good and what parts of it flow really good and you're also going to know all right i can tweak that and the more you do it the easier it's gonna you know it's gonna flow so just little tidbit there get yourself out of your comfort zone and just um so other than that i mean i don't know if anybody else has any other questions um i do have i have a couple of announcements that i'd like to make i don't know uh nick you and I talked about this earlier today about what we got coming up in store with the next next several webinars um, yeah, well, specifically next. so Obviously, you guys know that we've had, um, you know, other other guest stars in the past. Um, you know, celebrities like uh, Matt Veritas over there, chilling. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for coming on, Matt. No, uh, but you know, uh, folks like uh, you know Joshua Elder, he helped us out with some video marketing. Uh, Grady Polson from Online Sales Pro uh, kicked ass when we went through uh, email marketing and building your list. And then uh, last week, I thought it was fucking awesome when. Brian Dixon took everybody through Facebook editing. I think that was a phenomenal webinar last week. So coming up in the next few weeks that we're going to have Joel Kelman. And for those of you guys that don't know Joel, he is actually a co-founder with Online Sales Pro. So Joel and Grady co-founded Online Sales Pro and then obviously partnered with uh, Vincent Ortega. Um, And Joel is a beast an absolute beast when it comes to uh, building a list and growing his business he's also great at uh, Facebook advertising uh, Joel literally gets anywhere between a thousand to 1200 leads per day um, so uh, we're gonna have him on in the next month also for those of you guys that don't know who Travis Holder is, Travis is actually uh, Brian who was on last week Travis is Brian um, yeah, Brian and Travis are partners with the Enlight Group, and Travis is an absolute Instagram marketing guru, genius, whatever you want to call it. He's built a seven-figure business just from Instagram. Uh, we're going to have him on coming up in the next month as well. And I know a lot of times you guys like the tactical stuff. You know, um, we we're talking about a lot of the mind, you know, telling your story and speaking from your heart and speaking the truth, but you guys like you know, the tactical stuff. Well, Travis, just like Brian did last week, Travis is going to get into a lot of the technical stuff with Instagram and we're going to have an entire webinar all on Instagram training, which is, which is pretty awesome. And also I've been chatting with uh, the one, the only Vincent Ortega Jr. And he's going to join us on an upcoming webinar as well. Um, So Vince, um, obviously a multiple seven figure earner. He's actually an eight figure earner um, in the online marketing space. And he's going to, with uh, you know all of his knowledge, so we got a lot of 
<laughs> if you guys just hang out, man, I'm telling you, if you guys want 2017 to be your year, just keep hanging out with us every single Thursday. We're going to be bringing on guests and, and off with knowledge and, you know, just give you guys all the tools and tips and tricks that you need to uh, rock your business in 2017. So definitely got some special things coming your way. Yeah, I'm excited for all of it, man. I know, uh, you know, all those guys are going to bring a lot of value to the table. And in January, I'm actually leaving to Thailand, so I'm not going to be here for most of the month. For the most part, January 5th through the 23rd, I'm going to be in another country and just filming videos, doing all that stuff. But when I come back, you know, February, March, April, those are going to be some of the strongest months. And I know those of you listening in right now, like 2017 is your year, you guys. Instead of you know saying I'm going to set a New Year's resolution and then you just forget the resolution and then you just keep going about the daily routine, make a decision right now that this next year is going to be the year that is going to change your life. Okay, and staying tuned in with us, plugging in with these webinars, even watching the replays of the past ones that we've done, you guys will really like solidify that belief within yourself that you're going to be able to make this happen. Okay, and just stay tuned every single week. Keep coming on. Keep plugging in, you guys. But uh. Yeah, I know we appreciate all of you. Um, we're coming up on the two-hour mark right now. So anything else you guys want to throw out there? Any other questions really quick, you guys, before we, uh, you know, Dan, Dan and I close it out, Matt closed it out for you. Let's see here. So Nick asks, what's the biggest block in our business? Um, basically, I think uh, for me, it was making the decision. I, I'll say that over and over and over and over again uh, till the day I die, till I turn blue in the face. For me, it was making the decision to go all in. And all in doesn't necessarily mean spend a shitload of money. All in means just making the mental commitment that uh, this is going to work, that I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I've already, you know, even in uh, digital altitude, I've already lost a few thousand dollars on where I didn't really get the result that I wanted to um, sponsored a shitload of people, but um, it wasn't what I was looking for. And I, I could have given up. I could have walked away. But for me, um, I found another way to win. And that was getting into another form of advertising with Facebook advertising. Because, you know, when I, when I circled back to, it was a day right in the middle of July where I made the commitment decision this is going to finally work for me. And it was a, you know, a decision that I made with my wife. You know, I was going to make this work and nothing is stopping me because I've made that decision. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I committed to these weekly webinars. That's the reason that I committed to you know, my wife and my family and, and doing whatever it takes to make this work, being able to tell my story, being able to consistently drive leads, make videos, get Instagram going, get Facebook going, get YouTube going. And all that, uh, you know, I had to plan. I had to work it out. I made sure that every single day after we put our son down to bed that I had some isolated time where I could work my business because I made the decision never quit to go all in. But, you know, guys, years, you know, before July, I just dabbled, I tiptoed, you know, I might have worked hard. I might have thought that I was like really all in and going for it, but kind of this, it's almost like this weird, like euphoric thing. Like when you know, you know, and nothing is going to stop you. But for me, it was just deciding like, and it was, it, it took a lot of shit to happen along the way to get to that point. But as was my biggest block, just, you know, I'll just call it basically just like fucking around for a lot of years until I finally made the decision that, all right, I'm done fucking around and I'm going all in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's key, man. That decision is crucial. You know, for me, the biggest block was, I mean, that decision, I just burnt the boats and I was just like, fuck it, I'm going all in, you know? So the decision for me was a little bit easier, but at the same time, it's like, once you make that decision, you're going to face other blocks as you grow. So like for me, it was uh, motivation, I guess, just staying consistent on a daily basis and just forcing myself to do that. So like in order to get past that block, I just had to plug in with trainings that other my mentors were doing, you know, because I have multiple mentors out there in the online marketing space, some that I communicate with, some that I don't, some that are like passed away like Jim Rohn, but just constantly staying plugged in with that to stay motivated on a daily basis to keep putting in that work. Because as you start to make more money in your business, as you start to automate things a little bit more, you're going to find yourself like, you know, when you can get results without doing much 
and you're gonna find yourself becoming more lazy. So for me, it's like retapping into my why, my purpose, and why I got started in the first place, and remembering what it felt like to be new and have that burning desire and that hunger that would keep you up at night. You know, when you first get started with your business and you can't sleep, right, for like the first week. You know, if you're a normal person, right, or if you're insane like us, I guess, and uh, you can't sleep whatsoever, you know, to get that passion back again in your business. And I feel that just like those uncomfortable situations that we put ourselves in to do webinars like this, to do trainings and all that stuff really reignites that passion, that fire to keep going. I think the, the decision was definitely the biggest part, but for me, and I think you guys can relate, would be just starting out the information overload, right? Like there's so many different videos, training modules, webinars, you know, and it's just, it, it just kind of just gets cluttered, you know, and the biggest thing for me was to really just kind of focus on one and then just stick to that. And that has been like my biggest takeaway where I'm at right now is just focusing on Facebook. Yeah, like I, I kind of dabble in some other things because I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, perfect and tune my, my forms of marketing, but just Picking one if, if you're struggling with, you know, information overload uh, definitely helped me out like tremendously recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a huge point. Everyone gets it's it's so especially on Facebook, man. It's so easy to get lured away like by the big shiny object because all you see. I mean, think about how many other affiliate and and networking opportunities there are on Facebook, especially um, you know the 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 further you get into it and um, you know the further you grow it's like you start to get um, you know more and more friends online and on Facebook with people that are in other industries or people that are in the same niche um, or network marketing everybody's got their different thing everyone's posting their results or posting their lifestyle and it's and over here no look what I'm doing over here and it's like oh maybe I should try that oh maybe I should try that and it's like if you just stick to one thing and you get good at it. because realistically at the end of the day guys like opportunities out there you know most of them are good you know they're they're good opportunities and it's not to say that one is better than the other but you just stick one and you get good at it you're gonna get results yeah and that's true like sometimes you got to unplug too from all the nonsense that's out there to reconnect you know with your purpose and everything because it's like there's so much like what I found too and a big block as well I'll touch on this is really fast is I would sit on Facebook and I would just scroll paying attention to other people's lives right or watching stupid videos on YouTube getting stuck in the black hole and I end up on like just the most nonsense videos like skateboard fight videos people fighting in skate parks and I'm just like why am I watching this right now it's like wasting my time doing this and uh, I just scroll through looking at other people's lives and it's like sure you can get some inspiration from that if you're following the right people but there's a lot of junk out there that can draw your attention away from that so instead of focusing all on wh what who's doing what you know it's like you know the gossip in the media like TMC or what it's TMZ I think it's called where they're focusing on like what Kim Kardashian did or what Kanye West did it's like who cares right create your own life that other people would pay attention to right then maybe you can inspire them to create their own lifestyle that they would want right that they would want to talk about you know so just unplug focus on one or two marketing methods you guys and you know that lo this little breakthrough that you've had this webinar right here then just take action on that motivation that you feel after it because motivation it's temporary it's like showering you know it's effective but only for a short period of time that's why we recommend it daily so if you're gonna plug into anything plug into these webinars because we're going to tell you nothing but the truth and I hope you're okay with that and to what Nick was just saying taking action way 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 out trumps getting shit right and we spend way too much time overthinking and trying to get shit right like we literally just like you know melt our fucking brains trying to trying to do it perfect and like make the perfect video make the perfect post you know create the the perfect Instagram account where if you just get out there and you just fucking do it like yeah you might stall, you might hit a roadblock have someone and tell the duck but it's like if you can get past that because you made the decision then you know focus on speed focus on taking action and then you will get good along the way um, but don't focus on trying to be perfect and get everything right just take action amen so all right, awesome. Sweet. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see. So, awesome. um, yeah, yeah, we appreciate all you guys for hopping on with us tonight. You know, 
asking all your questions. You know, we do these for you guys, obviously. We've got nothing to sell here, just pure value to give you because we know that's going to help, you know, you guys out. It's going to help us out in the long term. And it just helps everyone grow in general. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, get a little sweaty just from sitting here going off. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah, no doubt. All right, cool. Well, uh, Matt, appreciate you being on. And uh, Nick, I will see you shortly. And uh, yeah, appreciate, appreciate you, everybody Matt. being on. You guys make it. You guys make it a great night. We'll talk soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. All, right. All right, see you guys.